Okay, so now as you can see, the training is completed. I think at the moment with GPT 4.0, it is currently free. So we are loading the OpenAI client and you must specify your OpenAI API key here and click on fine tuning. And then here in the base model, you should see what all models that you have available. Now let's create the data set. So you could just use the similar prompt to create as much as synthetic data as you want. So here I have captured a list of data. If you are diving deep into the space of AI and open source, then you are going to absolutely love this video. Because today I am going to show you the absolute easiest way to fine tune OpenAI's GPT model as of mid 2024. There are millions other YouTube tutorials on the same topic, but in my search, they are almost approx four to five months old, and you know how fast the AI space is moving, right? So if you have been searching a GPT model fine tuning guide that is up to date and straightforward and easy to follow, then this is the tutorial that you would love it. As you know, here on this channel, I am all about pushing the boundaries of AI while keeping everything open source so that you can leverage the cutting edge technology without breaking your band. So please make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'm going to upload more video like this in the future. Coming to the topic, so in this tutorial, I will show you what is purpose specific fine tuning is and the benefit of it by showing a real live example project of mine. Then I'll show you how to set up the environment, how to prepare the data set, and then I'll start the fine tuning process. We'll be using latest API and tools, ensuring that you are working with the most efficient setup possible. In the end, you will see the fine-tuned model in action. You will see how I have took the model for this specific use case and then I have made it powerful for whatever task that you may need. So if you're ready, let's dive in. So now I am back to my work window and before I go ahead and do the fine-tuning itself, let me first tell you a little bit about what is purpose-specific fine-tuning. Now as with the latest model release from OpenAI about GPT-40 and GPT-40 Mini, I think the model is really, really good. In my testing, I think almost all of my use cases, even with very big prompts, is working just as fine as I would expect. There is no problem with that. But even though the model is really good, there is still a risk of hallucinations. So when you give a big prompt, probably a very complex prompt, or maybe you're asking too much stuff from your prompt, then the model can get confused and can probably yeah, create some unintended output, right? This is where we need purpose-specific fine-tuning. And let me just give you a quick example. So this is one of my live project. And I've already created a video about it. This is called Naughty AI project. And as part of this project, in, at some part, what we are doing is we are doing tool calling. Now we could use OpenAI's assistant or OpenAI's out-of-the-box tool calling feature, but I didn't want to use that. I have intentionally used my agent to make the tool calling and, and make the decisions about tool calling. Uh, that's a separate topic i will probably cover in a separate video or you, if you want to check out the ISS agent you could do that and you can find out all about it but what i mean to say by purpose specific fine tuning is this is a prompt this is a very big prompt where i'm giving the conversation history i'm also giving the user input uh, as the ISS agent is making conversation with a potential customer and i'm also giving all the tools that is available what i mean by tools is all the list of apis and i'm just saying that hey you are a sales agent this is the conversation history please make sure if you need to make a call to a tool if you need to resume the conversation and then i'm just saying here are the list of tools if you find that there is a tool calling is needed then please tell me or respond me with the tool name and the operation id the tool header tool parameter tool body and all these bits and i'm asking OpenAI to give me feedback a specific format of so this is the format that i want the OpenAI to or any of the api to uh, respond to so that my AI agent will look at this format and then it can find out whether a tool calling is required and if required then it will make the tool call right and then I'm also saying by just giving example that if a conversation doesn't need a tool calling then uh, response by saying tool required as no so this is a very purpose specific response format where again GPT-4 many can be used but I would be reluctant to use it rather I would fine tune the model and use it so that I know that 29 out or probably out of 100 time i'll get the respond in a very specific format i hope that is making sense to you why you would need to fine tune the model if you still more information about where and why fine tune is needed and where and why vector database is needed and where and why few short prompting is needed 
I have a very separate masterclass about it. I'll attach the link. You should also see something on, on your right top and you can check out that masterclass where I have discussed this in more details. Cool. So now without wasting any further time, we will straight go ahead and create some synthetic data and create the necessary script and everything to do the fine tune. So just before that, this is a perfect example of Fusion prompt where I am giving a couple of examples for the AI model to know that this is how it needs to respond. Okay, cool. So what we will do is I have already created if we can within this particular naughty AI project, which is the AI cell setting project, I have already created a Python file with all the necessary code, basically start or kick off the fine tuning process. Now this is a really large file. If you want to access this file and all the training data and everything as an example, this is all open source. Then you should find the link below in the description uh, to get access to this project. So make sure click the link and uh, get access to all of this uh, coding file. Now I'll just go through very quickly what it is doing. Uh, basically here we are loading the OpenAI client and you must specify your OpenAI API key here. Here we are specifying the dataset path where the um, training data will be uploaded. And uh, then there are a couple of functions that I have defined. Uh, before even it go and do the fine tuning, it basically checks the number of tokens that is required for uh, the fine tuning. And then somewhere here, you can also set number of epochs. So the default epochs is 10 that I'm using. But uh, please remember, the more number of epochs that you use, the more amount of token that you need. So that means it is more cost to fine tune model. And it, the script is also calculating the cost. So this is the current cost of fine tuning GPT-40 mini model. Uh, probably not all of you will have access to GPT-40 Mini. How can you check that? You please go to platform.openai.com and click on fine tuning. And then here in the base model, you should see what all models that you have available. Now I didn't have GPT-40 Mini access, I think in only two or three days back, but I recently got access to GPT-40 Mini. If you do not have access yet, do not worry about it. You could still use GPT-3.5 Turbo with the same script. And um, so there is nothing that's going to be changed there. So this is all about it. And one more important thing that I want to mention uh, while you are here is I think at the moment uh, with GPT-40, it is currently free. So as you can see, so up to daily lim token limit, OpenAI is offering GPT-40 mini fine tuning for absolutely free. You do not need to spend any money on it if your data set is small. Or if you have large data sets, of course, it's going to charge you $3 per million tokens for fine tuning. This is for fine tuning. This is not for the usage of API. Please make sure of that. Yeah, cool. Then what it is doing is just create, uploading the data set, validating the data set, just creating the fine tuning job and the job is basically where we are specifying the model. Now, if you do not have access to GPT-40 Mini, just update it to GPT-3.5 Turbo and that should work. Now let's create the data set. This is the most important bit about any fine tuning process. How can we create a data set? Again, what I have done, so again, I have created a sample prompt file here and you can just copy the code from come here and we can just paste the prompt into chat gpt you can use anthropic but please make sure to use as best model as you can because this is this is because this prompt is going to create the synthetic data and using the synthetic data we are going to find in the model so you want to have the best quality of data to fine tune your model and if you have a live data like if you're an organization you have some data set already created you just need to clean up the data and create it in an appropriate format, which I will show you in few minutes. So let's walk through the prompt structure. So basically what I'm saying is, let me create a training data in a JSON-L format. So this is very important. You create the data for in JSON-L format, not JSON format for fine tuning job. Now, what is JSON-L format? I'll just quickly explain you. Please hang in there. Now I said GPT-3.5 travel model, you could change it to GPT-4 like, or, or mini model. But I generally found with that when I doesn't have information about the latest model release. So I usually use the Twitter by Turbo so it knows it has some context. I said, I'm looking to replace my system prompt. And then the system prompt I'm looking to replace is then I've just given the whole system prompt that I was showing just a little while back. So this is the prompt that I'm trying to, this is the prompt that I'm trying to replace. Why? Because this prompt is itself around 800 tokens itself. So as you can imagine, it might just cost me more and more than the cost. The problem is the bigger prompt that I will send, the AI will take more time to respond. So uh, this is also one of the reasons why I wanted to reduce the prompt. Just uh, what I'll do is if I can create a fine tune model, all I would say that here is the conversation history, here is the user user input, and here are the tools. Please generate video. That's all I'll do. All right. I do not need to specify all of these rules. I mean, these examples and all this, I do not need to do that anymore. So I will save some token cost and moreover, I will also get some performance benefit as well. So this is what I'm doing. And in the end, I said that please use this below format to create the JSON and training data where I have got this format. So for that, what you need to do is just go to this cookbook example 
I will again arrest the link for this data. So this data is used in this guide. Uh, again, this is an OpenAI cookbook guide generally published by OpenAI. Uh, so I have referenced it and saw the example file. So this is a reference file I have added. I have just copied a few of the lines from here and, and just pasted it here just so that I know the reference on how the JSON ill data needs to be created. And then I said, make sure that the last message in each entry is from the assistant. Why I said so is because if you see this data again, the last message is always from the assistant. And this is really required for your fine tuning model as well. So here also it's from assistant. The last message should be from assistant. This is the approach you should take when you're fine tuning. Once we have copied it, we can just go there and send it. And you will see that it will start creating the JSON L data for me. As you can see, it has started creating the data for me with the specific format that I need. What I am now doing is to get more data because this is just three or four data. I don't want that. So I said, I'm creating this data for a gym company to be used by an AI science agent. Please consider a different scenario where a customer could call and based on the scenario, please create more sensitive data set. And now this will start producing a lot of the data. So you could just use the same data prompt to create as much as synthetic data as you want. But again, if you have a real customer data, I would always encourage to use the real customer data, the real response that your AI probably sense team is using or whatever purpose that you find in your AI agent. So here I have captured a list of data. One thing that you should always ensure that in JSON L format, you will not have a comma between lines like to JSON. This is really important because usually in a JSON file, you have a comma in between two JSON element, but not in the JSON L file. This is something you should always keep in mind. Now everything is ready. What we need to do is I will go back to the Python file. So I'm just creating an API key. I'll just copy this and I will paste it there. Save it. And we are almost ready. Now, one very quick thing that you need to do if you are getting this project, you just use the requirement of txt and install every can even test this project. That would be really good if you want, if you can. But if you don't want to test the project, but you just want to run these files, what you can do is just look at the Python file and make sure these dependencies are installed. And you need is NumPy, TikTok, and, and OpenAI, and that should work. All the other models are usually from the Python uh, library itself. Now, once you have that, once you have installed, just create a Python environment and load it, install all the dependency, and all you have to do is just run this particular file. So how do you run this? It's very simple. After you run this particular project, I am running OpenAI, and this is where you have the As you run it, this will first calculate the, uh, I know it's showing $28. Don't be afraid on that one, because I think one of the calculations that I've done wrong is uh, it's costing per token, but it should cost per million token. Now I've updated the cost per token so that you don't get uh, spaced on the yeah. amount here just run it i just say it's going to cost me like zero seven dollar i know it's not going to cost me anything because as i said if i'm within limit um when i is not charging for gpt for me i'll just say yes so it will upload the file um the same file that i have used here and it will get now validate the file and you can see the status from the console as well as all you have to do is just go to fine tuning if you press this and as you can see, it is at the stage of validating file, and then you will see this file tuning is getting. Now it takes some time, so I will pause the video now, and then I'll come back once the file tuning is successful to show you the end result. How I am going to use this um, this particular training model in my application. Okay, so now as you can see, the training is completed. Um, training loss is 0 0.3615, which is really not that good. Uh, reason is because we haven't run it on high number of epochs or we haven't had a lot of training data. So the more training data that you will have and the more epochs that you will run, it is generally the training loss is going to be lower. So if you do not know of this, you should note that the less the training loss number is, the better the fine tuning job have happened. So that means your model is more performing and um, can train well that indicates so if it is nearby 0.1 or 0 i think getting i think achieving zero is really difficult but even if it is like one or nearby that means you really right that's fine we will still test using this particular uh, model and see whether it's going to and see whether it's um, working or not now on the uh, front you might get this uh, don't worry about it this is because 
and I'm using a wrong library there. If you test the model, I will fix that before I upload the video. Don't worry about it. But yeah, this is just uh, what's happening is after the fine tuning is done, it's just trying to test it and it's just failing because of library dependency issue. So what we are going to test it is we just need to copy the uh, name from here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this AI agent for which I have now, now the prompt is really small as you can see again if you are not sure what I'm doing now this is just uh, I paste the AI sales agent I already have a video about it how to use this AI sales agent for your project so please make sure to watch the video I will attach the link in the description as well um, the API key and all I have to do is update the find Get that get config and should be good. Now what I need to do is just add a custom mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just going to test it now. Uh, what's the price? And as you can see, it has now selected the fine-tuned model that we have fine-tuned, and the fine-tuned model have responded as the output format that we were expecting. So you can see it has responded with this parameter and all this stuff. This is how you should use and find your model for your own business use case. And if you have any issues and doubt, please join the community. You should find a link on the description to join the community where you can raise any questions that you have or if you have any confusions or doubt. And with this, I am going to end the video right now. Um, please make sure subscribe to the channel because this is a channel where you will get more such type of video in the upcoming days. And don't forget to like the video so that the video reaches out to the wider audience who needs the similar help. And so this is it. Thank you for watching. Um, please take care and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.